Hello and welcome to episode four of Inside Irons. I'm Chris Gold. Joining me in the studio, the Mikel Antonio to my Mikel Antonio. It's Carlton Cole. Hi. And also, he was England and West Ham's number one between 2001 and 2004. David James is here in the studio. Good afternoon. How are we? Very well, thank you. First time in the stadium. First time in the stadium. Well, look, let's talk about the last week because it has been an emotional roller coaster. We had a really frustrating defeat against Burnley. We followed that up with a win against Norwich and then Villa and Bournemouth win over the weekend. The pressure is back on. How have you found it, David? I just feel, I mean, I've got four club, four ex-clubs in the relegation battle. So um, the emotions are like a seesaw. Yeah. You know, West Ham, obviously, and then Watford winning, it was a bit like fantastic. Bournemouth and Aston Villa won't win. Aston Villa and uh, Bournemouth obviously go on and win. And then West Ham must be in a still happy because you'd rather win the game, yeah. obviously, than not. <laughs> but um, all of a sudden, it's, it's congested again. Yeah. And, uh, amazing view. And yeah. What a yeah. What a if win. you're an impartial fan, but as a West Ham fan, Carl, this is, <laughs> this is squeaky bum time. Yeah, but we've not, it's nothing we've not dealt with before. Is <laughs> being, being a West Ham fan, all, all the fans know what, what it takes to get out of this situation and it takes solidarity. And I think um, everyone's hung in there, especially through this period, this COVID period as well. It's not been easy for anyone, but we've come back and um, we're coming up trumps again. So we beat Chelsea, we beat the likes of um, the last team, for Zip, Norwich. So it's onwards and upwards, isn't it? And a quick word of Mikel Antonio, he will be joining us on the show in a minute. But yeah. um, you were effusive in your praise a few weeks ago. And I mean, what can you say after that performance against Norwich? Well, he just um, justified what I was saying, really. He's just a massive handful up there. He's um, a powerhouse. He gives that defenders no rest. And he just keeps on going and growing and growing. Yeah, he's fantastic. Couple of stats for you. That was West Ham's first away hat trick since Paul Kitson put three past Charlton in 2001. But here's an even better stat. We've got two of West Ham's top five all-time Premier League goal scorers on the show today. Di Canio got 47, Noble's on 46, Carlton Cole on 41, Trevor Sinclair 37. But Mikel Antonio now on 34. He's breaking into the top five. And is he the man to kick you out of the top three? You looking over your shoulder? Oh, listen, you can have you can have those sort of accolades. I don't mind. Um, just as long as we stay up, because <laughs> like, it keeps me in a job in the Premier League. Mate. <laughs> uh, David, surprised not to see your name on this list because I do know you had a spell up front for City. I'm surprised, you know, and we had an injury crisis 2003. Ian Pearce played up front for a while. Did you put your name forward at any point? Well, if you'd have seen me against City, then <laughs> I'm surprised I lasted that. I think it was eight minutes. It seemed like half an hour. But, uh, I was one of the best shooters. Oh, really? So yeah. is that why uh, Stuart Pearce actually played you on that day in another West Ham Hammer of the Year? Yes. Uh, so he fancied you up front? He, he thought, well, saw I, something if in you? If he'd have told me that there was a chance I was going to play up front, then I would have done some practice. Overnight. <laughs> 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 literally, literally at half-time, the kit man went, I've got your shirt done. I'm like, what do you mean? Because you might be going up front. I'm like, OK, no, well, let's carry on with the second <laughs> half. But then the, the board goes up, eight minutes to go, I think it was, and then... Uh, yeah, I won every header. <laughs> Fouled every middles player. <laughs> Hang on, why does the kit man know that you're going up front, but you they, don't? Because no, he had to print the kit. He had to print the kit. They always, they're the first to know the squad. <laughs> Shit, really? Yeah. Yeah. You need the heads up before the kit man does, surely. Well, judging by my touch and my tackling, yeah, I would have <laughs> half an hour practice, I think I would have been all right. But, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. I used to do that all the time as well. Like the kit man, you've got to be, the, they're your best friends in the <laughs> like, Especially when I, when I went away with England, you, obviously you was on a few of those trips. And then, um, like, I just always went to the kit man because we didn't get to know the squad and who was on the bench until, um, like, like, the same day. Yeah. But he would know the day before and everything, so I just... I just uh, got really? Up. Yeah, he always knew. You didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I always knew. So I just, went, I just went to the kit man. I was always stuck in my room, just wait, <laughs> waiting for the team meeting and then the team announcement. It was like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, coming up a bit later on in the show, we'll have Tony Cotty joining us. But before that, let's talk to the hero of the hour, our four-goal hitman, Mikel Antonio. Welcome to the show, Mikel Antonio. Mikel, the first West Ham player to score four goals in a, in a game in 39 years. Not a bad way to spend your Saturday lunch time. <laughs> to be fair, I'm buzzing, man. Like, so it was, it's unbelievable. Um, things just kind of like dropped to me on the day, and I reckon I could have had probably one more, but um, it, was, it was a great day. Yeah. 
How did it feel to play in that game? Because it felt like early on we were getting chances. Like it was clear we were going to score some goals. Did you feel like before you scored that first, there's goals in this game for me? Oh, definitely. Um, there was loads of opportunities, like you just said. Um, they were a team that, because they play um, like good football, they, they try and um, expand their team so they're, they're open wide. So when they lose it, we're kind of like free running, basically running at their goal. So... Um, there was definitely goals in the game, which obviously which happened, but we believe that we we're going to score goals because of the way they play when, and when they lost the ball. Um, you came off in the 70, 78th minute, but did, did part of you think, like, I could have got five or six here? Like, this, there was more goals to be had. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, the gaffer took me off because obviously I've, I've played every game so far since COVID, um, so I've got to to get a rest. So. But, like, I'm not going to lie, when you're on four. <laughs> 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 I've got one. Can I get two? <laughs> nice. What uh, What have you done with the match ball? Where is it right now? It's already in my house. It's already in my house. In my man cave. Have you put it on a mantelpiece <laughs> in the living room? Yeah, so the yeah. Got the mantelpiece in the box, like nice. Was, like, my missus just had had the box there randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to score. <laughs> Carlton, Mikhail's either scored or assisted seven of our nine goals this season and you've been effusive in your praise for him. I mean, what a, what a job he's doing. Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, Mikel's like, other than him just working hard for the team and being selfless, he's been an absolute pleasure to watch. He's been busting some skills as well, isn't he? On the pitch, I'm thinking, yeah, I didn't even knew he had that in the locker. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but he's been doing, he's been doing bits, of, bits for the team and... The most thing he's been doing is just giving, showing the team what he's actually capable of. Yeah, as, as, as well, Mikel, it just feels like you're playing with such confidence at the moment. Like, and everything you do seems to end in a goal or a, an assist. When things are going your way, like literally everything you feel, anything you think in your head, just literally, you feel like it's going to come off you. So, like, I'm just going to keep going and keep um, working hard. And... and David, you're a former England international yourself. With Mikel in this kind of form, Gareth Southgate has to be looking and paying attention, right? I, I think so indeed, yeah. I mean, I just want to ask you one question. Do you remember when I met you at the training ground at um, Savile, Savile Road? Savile Road. Savile Road, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When um, we had a little talk before, before my call-up. That's right, yeah. Yeah, because I met, met Mikel so, at the training ground and it was just, just how, I mean, just yeah. at that time, you were sort of new at West Ham, of course, and then to look at you now, obviously after the weekend, yeah. how's that transition felt? It's crazy because... Even now, like I've scored four goals. Every time I see somebody, I was like, oh, well done. Oh, it's amazing. What an achievement and stuff like that. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stay humble. Do you know what, M Mikel, do you know what? Like, obviously, you saw him before mm -hmm. that call up. And then now, the stars are aligned again. So hopefully, you'll be getting called yeah, up man. again. Do you know what I mean? Because you just met David. Well, not met him, but... Yeah. You've spoken to well, David James again. As close you know as I mean? we can There's, get in the current yeah, yeah. circumstances. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So hopefully, yeah. I'm, fingers crossed for you, Geese. Yeah, man. Yeah, just one of the things where, like, I've kind of got to that stage where I feel if I just keep performing and keep doing what I do, um, then things will happen. I don't really pay attention to actually trying to get called up for anything because I know I've got the ability to do it. It's just um, just showing it on the pitch and yeah. things come when you're doing it on the pitch. And four goals, Mikhail, and not one of your trademark celebrations. What's happened? <laughs> you're, you're scoring goals all the time, but that's just gone, is it? It's like, I was thinking about doing it, but I was like, oh, the situation the club's in, and then, like, with the fans not being there, like, everything. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't do the homer one with the fans not being there. It would just look awkward. Like, I'm there dancing and some on my own. Like, I've got more time to do it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, last question, Watford on Friday night. We, you know, we know what this game means now. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, we're confident. Um, every game we've played so far, since Chelsea anyway, we've been playing well. Um, Chelsea, Newcastle, we've created loads of chances. Burnley, even though we lost, we had so many opportunities. They defended unbelievable. Keeper did so well. And then um, Norwich managed to get four goals and the clean sheet, which have been invading us for a very long time. So... Um, through, through the games we've been watching with Watford, um, um, like they're doing well, picking up points, but we believe in ourselves and we believe we can get three points. Wicked. Great to hear. Fantastic work at the weekend and best of luck on Friday night. Thank you. Mikel Antonio there. He's proved himself a tremendous asset these last few games, David.
Absolutely, yeah. Um, and he looks happy. Yeah, you, you want, if anything, you want your players to look that happy. I know scoring four goals would have yeah. obviously caused that, but um, as you say, he's in, he's in form. Yeah. Big game coming up. Yeah. You want your full man to be happy. As an ex-Watford player, you know, <laughs> both teams survive, I'll be happy. Yeah, well, we'll get, we'll get into that game <laughs> itself. Interesting the stuff he said there about his confidence. I remember seeing yeah. an interview with Mark Webber, who's an F1 driver, and he won like three races in a row, of, like probably like 10 years ago now. But he was talking about like, when you play, when you like have that confidence as an athlete and you just feel like everything's going right, yeah. it just, something clicks, doesn't it? You've had that in your career yeah, too. You get like purple patches, don't you, in your career where everything's just coming off. I, think, I remember I went on a, a seven goal, seven game goal streak. Yeah. I was scoring every game. So <laughs> that's unheard of for me. <laughs> <laughs> I never, t- I never emulated again though, did I? <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that, but everything, that period, I understand it. It's like everything just goes for you and then look, and I, I really feel for him that there's no fans there so he could do his celebrations because it would be more of a buzz for him. But yeah. now nah, he's, he's done what he's had to do and he knows how much it means to the club for him to be scoring these goals and being in form. And thankfully for us, it's clicking at the right time. It's interesting you say that without the fans because to promote him into the England side again, yeah. without the fans there, you could argue he's doing it on his own, yeah. you know, you know yeah. I'm saying on his own, but yeah. he's not having that, uh, that, that extra fan motivation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. for him to go and play for England, where they're not all going to be West Ham fans, I know there's a lot of West Ham fans yeah. in England, then he could actually produce yeah. that sort of form in front of anyone, which is more of a plus for him. Yeah, yeah for sure. Th- this is the Antonio England push. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, is it? Come on, Gareth. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching. Well, we're joined in the studio this week by one of West Ham's all-time great Premier League goalkeepers. 102 appearances in all competitions. Let's have a look back at David James' time with the Hammers. Take the distance, he'll hit one. Kick. Well, welcome, David. Everybody at the moment is talking about the fact that in your second season at West Ham, we got relegated on 42 points. We'll get on to that, but let's not start with it because your first season with West Ham we finished seventh, played some unbelievable football. Yeah, um, it was a bit of ambivalence, yeah. I have to say, for my uh, my sort of start of my West Ham career because the the Wednesday I think it was before the first game. I don't even know who the first game was supposed to be. Um, I was playing <laughs> playing for England, White Hart Lane. For some reason it sounded wrong, but um, <laughs> played a White Hart Lane against Holland. We lost two 0 in the game, but I came on at half time. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank came running through after 45 seconds, a collision with Martin Keown. Oh, Keown. And, uh, yeah, that's how I felt. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm forgiven him. I've seen him a few times. I'm forgiven him. And yeah, got stretched off. Wow. So 45 seconds into the game, uh, injury, stretched off. Maybe the shortest England appearance ever from a half time sub. And um, I was out for, what, three and a half, four months with um, wow. knee injury. So that wasn't a very good start. And I think my first game was Tottenham 1-0 yeah Teddy Sheringham these names just keep coming up they're the, they're the names <laughs> I've been having nightmares over in the last in lockdown so, where was that uh, at White Hart Lane too no 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 oh I imagine no. that that was a home game yeah it was 1-0 I'm sure yeah, yeah I think that's right I think Poya hit it tipped onto the post and anyway <laughs> it might be memories, memories, memories. memories. But then you were saying you never missed you never played every West Ham game after that point I can't until I you can't left. remember missing a West Ham game because I had five years where I, I didn't miss a game yeah. so from West Ham Premier League yeah. Championship for half season wow. then went up to Man City wow. and didn't miss a game for Man City then Portsmouth Blimey. and then I missed one game because I, I pulled my calf and Harry wouldn't let me play <laughs> was, was, you, was you devastated? when I missed that first game yeah because I, I, <laughs> I was at Man City funnily enough took a goal kick and I, as I took the goal kick I went mm. Didn't even think anything of it. God. And then the physio came up to me afterwards and went, is your calf all right? And I went, yeah, fine, fine. And then for four days, didn't train, wow. had a bit of massage and he went, you need a scan. And I went, nah, don't worry about it. Had a scan, grade one tear. Oof, and we wow. had a cup final coming up and Harry oh. wouldn't, let, he wouldn't oh. let me play. And I was like, just let me go yeah. on. <sighs> if you'd have kept that run going, you could still be playing now. Maybe <laughs> in another life. Well, it's funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't see me in Hong Kong, so I'm not sure. <laughs> nah, he's decent. Yeah, yeah still yeah, got still it. Decent, still got it. <laughs> like, he doesn't, but he gets very, um, like, because he's a winner, isn't he? Competitive. So he's, get, he's got that competitive streak. Really? So anyone that's not playing well, 
we'll let them know. Well, well, let's talk about that because we had Anton Ferdinand on last week. He talked about his debut. He was at fault for the first goal, which was at Preston when we had that season of oh, the championship. Yeah. And he said that you turned around to him and said, what are you doing, Anton? You shouldn't even be in the team. <laughs> he said, oh, I never said that. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, he, no, said no. That. he said that. He said that. He said that. He said that. Hey. He said that. And that, he's not going to say that. Because um, that was his first um, team debut. No, I wouldn't have said that. Maybe in the heat of the moment. In the heat of the moment. You just said you're doing it in Hong Kong. I, would, <laughs> I have to defend myself here. I, I haven't got a problem with saying someone's done something wrong. Yeah. yeah. But I would never say that he shouldn't be in the team. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So okay. You, maybe, maybe you didn't it. hear me. Yeah. yeah. It is it. It is I mean, it. Preston, there's a lot of fans. Well, he did yeah. say as well that the West Ham fans are giving him a bit of abuse as well. So maybe he's so confused. Be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just a whole bluff. <laughs> they give me abuse at times as well. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. I, I, I wouldn't have said that. I'm no. not. That's what I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Listen, Anton, you need to correct this. <laughs> Give David a call. I know yeah, you've got some yeah, things on yeah. your mind. <laughs> He's probably held that grudge for years, actually. <laughs> um, look, well, let's talk about some of the characters and players you played with, like uh, Dick Hanio, Joe Cole, Jermaine Defoe, John Monker, Steve Lomas, Christian Daly. So much ability, so much skill, some absolute characters. It must have been a fun dressing room to be a part of. It was a tremendously good changing room. Um, unfortunately, and... The, I mean, obviously, it was that second season getting relegated. There has to be some sort of negativity about it. But there was, it was a great changing room. Um, and we, we, we just, in that year, we kind of lost where we were going. Mm. You know, for, for a period of time, we lost where we were going. And, you know, where West Ham are now in the league, they're in, in the driving seat in a sense that they win the games, they stay up. Yeah. Yeah. We were always behind the eight ball. And, mm. you know, we had a mad run when, I remember, Sir Trevor came in. And he just the season just went, hang on a minute, if nothing against Glenn Rhoda, but it was like the way that he took hold of the side, yeah. a good side. And I think we would have finished in Europe if that form had been replicated yeah, over the, the season. the form of that second half is insane. Yeah. It's so well. And we had, we had, as I say, the change room was really good, although, again, there was, there was some bits that were going a bit wrong sort of publicly. Oh, and yeah. we were trying to get it right within the changing room. So, um, as you yeah. say, those players, I mean, John Moncur, one of the funniest guys <laughs> yeah. you're... Top man. Yeah. Top man. He's got, oh, he's, um, you, got, you got him I laughing heard there. He's a got... bit of a wildcat back then, man. Do you know what I mean? So. Did you get away with much? much? Me? Yeah. You? For the team? Back in... no, 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 no one did. All, I was always good. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah. I, I was Paolo Di Canio in there. Interesting. <laughs> That's what I want to know. I've, Let's talk. I've heard some people say he was an amazing trainer, and other people say he wasn't that good a trainer. He was like, you know, he wasn't that intense. I don't know what, what I'm allowed to say. You? I don't know what I'm allowed to say. You're allowed to say no, what no, he was. Okay, okay, so, a safe space. So we had a we when I joined the club, um, people said, "Oh, we got a player who will leave the training field if he's not happy with training." <laughs> and I went, "Oh, really, John Monker?" <laughs> And um, we, we had a training session, and he started walking off. And if, that's he's not, I, if, he's, if he's not happy with training? Yeah. Hold on a minute. <laughs> wait, wait. Well, so you're the manager, so he'll say, oh, the training's not good today, I'm going. Like, no. One of them will walk oh, off. Oh, is it? So I, I literally went, hang on a minute. Yeah. You can get yourself back on the training field, and essentially got him back on the training field, because... Yeah. We have to be together in this. Yes. Yeah. So there was a there was characters which again yeah. the the makeup of the characters in the change room were like laughy jokey, very serious, yeah. secure, insecure, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And it, it was it was a good place to be in because every day was like a bit different. You didn't know what was going <laughs> to come. What am I walking but, into today? Yeah. Unfortunately, when you when you're not winning games, yeah, then that it sort of um, effervescence in, yeah, a, in yeah. a positive way yeah. becomes negative. Because you don't know what you're going to get. What oh, you want to know? Can I go is back it? to what you just said there? Effervescence. What does that, what, what does that mean? It's those tablets Probably. you drop in the water, <laughs> in it, and the, the orange fizzy drink. Yeah. You can't be using <laughs> these big words on me, Jamo. Please. I'm on okay. camera, well, man. The, the, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting you said that stuff about the, like maybe Paolo walking off the pitch because like, the criticism of Glenn Roder was always that he was a great coach but not necessarily a great manager. Mm. When you think about the characters and the kind of the, the tough minds and you know. The, like having to deal with those personalities, maybe that wasn't, was that part of the reason like, it was a difficult job for him to do? Maybe he didn't have the kind of right skills? Well, having done, mani having done management, having been a manager, uh, albeit in India, um, with, a, with Berbatov, for example, oh, yeah. you know, we, we've got a, you know, international Premier League, international uh, sort of superstar. Marquee like signing. I didn't sign him. Oh. 
I, I, I inherited it. Um, and then there, there becomes a balance. And it depends, I think, as a manager, what you set your stall out. Mm. If you want to be everyone's friend, yeah. then you're going to lose. Yeah. yeah. You, right. you know, there has to be rules and regulations. Boundaries. Yeah, and yeah. boundaries. So um, I think with Glenn, because Glenn was, is a lovely person. Yeah. Mm. And my experience with lovely managers, especially in the Premier League, is that they don't, they don't keep a change room together. You need some authority, you need to upset people. And it doesn't mean you just willy-nilly upset people, but that, as I say, that boundary has to be there. And with Paolo, I mean, what a player. Yeah. There's no, and I understand why West Ham fans love him. And, uh, and you know, anecdotally, again, we had a situation where I think he was injured in that run-in for the, when we got yeah. relegated. And so Trevor went, yeah, I'm going to put Paolo, I'm thinking of playing him in the next game because he'd been injured for a little, a few games yeah. or something. It was like, Whatever we need to do to win the game. Yeah. And he came on, I think, scored the winning penalty it's, against Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea, and now, yeah, isn't it? And it was over. like three points. Fantastic. It, it, it wasn't about personalities, no. it was about who was going to win games of football. And so Trevor knew what he needed to do yeah. to win these games. Bolton away. <laughs> that was the, oh, it all kicked, so, it all kicked oh, off mate. in that game, didn't it? What? So, what, tell me, what happened? Because. And we had a corner. Yeah. He got cleared. Cissé didn't clear it. Yeah. And then JJ Acosta runs down, decides to do an outside of the foot in the top left-hand corner, or top right, if you're me, and we lose 1-0. Yeah. That was our that, relegation. That was the game. That was the game that sent us down, ultimately, wasn't it? People always say, you know, you had a team that was too good to go down. Yeah. But the, you know, the mathematics proved that we weren't too good to go down because we went down. Mm. Again, I mean, it's an interesting thing with, obviously, the relationship with managers because Glenn brought me into the club. Um, for me, I mean, having been up in Man, uh, not Man City, sorry, um, Aston Villa, mm. I was coming back home, you know, in a sense, coming down south again. Um, growing up in Hertfordshire, <clears throat> anything north of Watford was proper north. <laughs> so, uh, being at Watford Liverpool and Aston, yeah, it was kind of like really north. But, um, yeah, so getting back down to sort of where my family was in, uh, or with the family back down in London. And then Trevor, so Trevor came in. As I say, he just illuminated the, the football club to yeah. the point that when we went down, it was like, you stay in. <laughs> really? You know, we wanted him Did to stay. Did the players wanted the... oh, Trevor to stay? He, he was awesome. Was oh. he? The funny thing, again, anecdotally, there's certain things that back in the day, loads of managers would do. And it would be like, train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or the first three days. You would kind of do your own thing. Mm. And then Thursday and Friday, you start looking at the opposition. Yeah. And we played, again, it was that Chelsea game. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm on the train, it was Monday, and so Trevor walks past and he goes, Jamer, or Jamesy, <laughs> he says, uh, watch out for that lad, Bakioko, or whatever his name was, and I said, why is it? He said, because he likes to shoot from distance. I said, so Trev, oh, no, I don't think he was a sir then, he might have been. I said, <laughs> Trev, Trev, what are you doing? He went, what do you mean? I said, it's Monday, and you're talking about the team we're playing next on Saturday. He had already prepared, He's and that was the thing, it was really? like he was preparing for every game, the first oh, opportunity he had. So, so Trev was, was awesome. And then when Alan came in, you kind of knew that the, the fit wasn't quite right. Oh, so really? we were playing the game and, you know, when the Man City came in, it wasn't like, Dave, we want you to stay. Mm. It was kind of like, oh, hang on. I, I, I think I'm not really wanted here so much. So, uh, yeah, got the move. A um, few questions we ask all our guests. Who was your favourite teammate that you played with at West Ham? Obviously. West Ham team. Uh, Trev Sinclair. I mean, Trevor's, Trevor's kids are friends with my kids. Oh, so, uh, oh lovely. So, so we got that relationship. We've obviously then Man City together. Yeah. Um, I've been out, when he was in Dubai, went out and saw him in Dubai. So, oh, you know, I, yeah, yeah. me and Trevor. Oh, lovely. Uh, who is the best player you played with? Best technically, ability-wise? I think, well, that's a very good question. I think Paolo. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, you got Coley. Yeah. Not Cole and Cole, by the way. Yeah. 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 Cole, Cole, <laughs> we weren't the same time. Um, Joe Cole obviously had loads of skill, but Paolo, Paolo had this elegance about him. I mean, yeah. as a player, on his day, that's the one that you want in the side. Yeah. But then you've got the likes of Jermaine, Jermaine Defoe, as a striker. Yeah. I mean, he was annoying. <laughs> just everywhere, isn't it? Just buzzing he, around. Yeah, he yeah, was so. annoying. He was cheeky. Yeah. He could hit a ball like a mule. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had loads of shooting competitions and, you know, he was he was hard work and again with with my time with him at Portsmouth I mean he was yeah, top, top draw top but I think draw, I yeah. think Paolo 
and I mean, anyone who knows history about me and Paolo, we had a, we had a moment when I was playing for Aston Villa. So um, really, the, yeah, we 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 got good. <laughs> <laughs> slightly non -con not, he was well, slightly non um, complimentary towards me in his book. Yeah, and that was before I signed for West Ham. Oh really? And when I signed for West Ham, he was the first person to say hello to me. So you know, Paolo is a player. Yeah, yeah I played with course. him at Charlton. He was unbelievable. Like, yeah, I've never like obviously I played with Zona, but I put him on that category. Yeah, of technicians, like mm. he was unreal, and uh, he could he could control the team at his pace as well. So remember, he wasn't the quickest of players. He no. wasn't athletic, but what he could do with a ball was unreal. So. Hopefully we could get on him in show soon. Yeah, and he, and he shaved his legs to make himself that little bit quicker. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, oh man, slim line. He's like, he was like always shaving yeah. his legs, <laughs> waxing. And I was like, what is this? This is the first time I've ever seen anybody do it, by the way. Last question. What was the best match you played in for West Ham? Again, it's sort of bittersweet. Um, we beat West Brom at West Brom 2-1. Mm. And I had, if I say so myself, I had, one, I had a good game. Um, and I think we went 1-0 down as well. And I think um, Moore scored their goal. So we, yeah, we, we beat them 2-1. They were in the, the battle as well, weren't they, to go down, I think. That year. I think we might have put them down with that victory. Oh. And I just think, even though we got put down, if, if you can put a side down... Yeah. Great so feeling. <laughs> it feels so good. Wow. <laughs> it's evil, that That's, is. It's, it's, like, wow. it's, like it's people's one. livelihoods yeah. we're talking about here. <laughs> so David, you're <laughs> sick. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, you just... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, well, we've got Aston Richard. Villa Aston Villa here last game of the season, but before that, we've got Watford at home on Friday night. Yeah. Let's take a look at the head-to-head. -head. So West Ham shading it on the head-to-head -head over the last six games. Three wins to Watford's two. Those three wins, a 2-0 victory in February 2018 here at London Stadium, and then a 4-1 win at Vicarage Road in May 2019, and a 3-1 victory earlier this season. Right, lads, this is stressful. It's a relegation battle, but we've got to have the wind in ourselves after that Norwich victory. David, how do you see this game going? I know you've got divided loyalties here, but maybe can we have a little bit of West Ham bias in your opinions? Well, the West Ham win this one. <laughs> is, that, is that what we want? <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> I think, right, I mean, with West Ham's win, obviously confidence is high. Um, you've beaten Norwich, or West Ham beating Norwich, which you would expect them to do. I mean, that was one that Emphatic. if you're going to win games, you have to. But listening to Mikel earlier, talking about how the fact he thought he could score more, he's buzzing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you got, yeah. so you got the striker buzzing. The thing about Watford is, obviously, they can grind out results. Yeah. And they will change, what I noticed in their, uh, in their last match was the way they sort of changed their tactics. It wasn't quite working, then all of a sudden it goes long ball, mm -hmm. rough and tough stuff. Oh. Um, not the most prettiest football, but effective, and obviously with Troy Deeney, that, that's another point, you know, a couple of penalties. When mm -hmm. teams are scoring from penalties rather than just open play, you've got to get those penalties in the first place. So I, I would think West Ham should shade it. And I'm saying that without any oh, okay. bias okay. whatsoever. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Carl, to look at those yellow cards, look at those red cards. Troy Deeney doesn't like us. There's been a lot of kind of testy games recently. This is one of those games that you're going to have to keep your composure, right? Look, look Troy Deeney's a fantastic player. Um, whether he likes us or not, it's part of our <laughs> problem right now. <laughs> because at the end of the day, we need to win the game. They need to, to win the game as well. But at the same time, I'd look at this whole, with for, going on form, West Ham, this is, a, this is a win. But you know what West Ham are like. We'll like beat teams emphatically then might got drop off the wayside a little bit the next game so hopefully we cannot um, live up to expectations <laughs> <laughs> and, and surprise everyone and just make sure that we win some back-to-back -back games because that's what we need at the moment yeah, absolutely right well you know there's a relegation run-in happening here let's have a look at the fixtures for the teams around us okay so here's the run-in we are three points clear of Bournemouth four points clear of Villa with nine points left to play for looking at that run-in this Watford game is absolutely huge but with Bournemouth run in there you think they probably won't beat City, they could get six points, so 37 would be enough for us, I think, and we could do that with a win in one of those three final games. Yeah, I mean, Carlton's saying about the sort of up and downs of West Ham season, I mean, Man City have been up and down recently. I mean, you're Don't talking... Don't say that, David. Not well, as in, <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, but the, the, this is why I think, and again, go back to Mikel's uh, chat that he had earlier, that, that emotional 
and for a West Ham fan at the moment, it's like, yeah, fantastic, yeah. three points, and all of a sudden Bournemouth, yeah. did they beat Leicester or did Leicester implode? It's difficult to work out, but Man City up and down, Man City on form, Bournemouth have no chance at all. Yeah. But if Man City for any reason don't turn up, then they're the one side out of those three that you'd think Bournemouth could get something out of. Southampton, Everton, yeah, they well, Everton's form on the weekend wasn't yeah. particularly great. I mean, Everton have got a lot to do as well with uh, with Aston Villa playing, but West Ham and Watford drawing is going to be possibly the worst result. Yeah, as an impartial person, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they're all my teams. Um, <laughs> You've had more clubs than Nick Powell. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Marlon Hellwood. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I mean a, a draw for West Ham and Watford is you know. Uh, 12 o'clock on sort of Sunday afternoon would have been all right, but yeah. now it's sort of one one win, <sighs> one win needed for West Ham. He'd be happy. Um, Definitely. Carlton, I wanted to ask you Everton, Villa and Bournemouth both play Everton, a kind of mid table, nothing really to play for, but we've got games against teams below us. Is that, mm. Does that put us in a better position than if we were playing someone with, you know, we're playing potentially weaker teams than playing a team with nothing to play for? No, it doesn't put us <laughs> in a better position at all because... It's a dogfight. It's a dogfight. Once you, it's this stage of the season and you just got to go with your... Well, the manager's got to pick the right team. I think um, we've, got, we've still got players coming in from injury as well, mm. so hopefully they can bolster up our attack. And um, listen, we just got to just win every game. <laughs> That's the, yeah, that, is I, the, that is the key to this, right? I mean, no, if, if you're in that changing room, these two games don't matter. Yeah. And yeah. those nine games don't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Watford's first game, well, I say nine games, eight games. You, you look at the Watford game, you go, this is the only thing that we have to worry about. Yeah. We're not considering Aston Villa the last win of the season yeah. to keep us up. Get three points now, worry about what's happening yeah. after. Because you can't, you can't be depending on other teams. Once you start depending on other teams, that's when it can, off, it can go awfully it's, it's wrong. The worst, it's the worst being, scenario. Being in that changing room, I mean, it's slightly different at the moment because of the current crisis that mm. we're sort of playing games different days rather yeah. than sort of the weekend block. But there's nothing worse than going in the change room and then first thing you're looking for looking the results. Looking for the results. No. Or yeah. going home and sitting there watching it. Like again, the Bournemouth game and phew, no, Leicester have won this. Goal kick. Hang on a minute. What happened now? <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just sitting my coffee and it's 2-1. It's you know kind of I mean? like, yeah, yeah, that sort of feeling. You win the game against Watford. Like I say, that should be enough. Yeah. Can I get a prediction of the scoreline against Watford? 4-3. 4-3 to West Ham. Ooh, it's <laughs> oh my just, God. Why not? <laughs> why, yeah, why not? Because no one, I, they, 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 want, they don't want to draw. This yeah, is I be, could really uh, do without that much. That's <laughs> 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 too many goals conceded. 4-0, please. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've just come off the back of um, the Norwich game. Mikel's flying 4-0. I'd have to say, let's go. I'd, I'd be happy with a 2-1. 2-1. 2 one. We You'd be happy with it. Wait, wait. Yeah, I'll be happy with it. Only because I know... Um, as I said, we haven't had back to back wins. So anything that's back to back, I'm taking all day long. Four three yeah. back to back. That's a bit, yeah, that would count. Yeah, yeah. But four <laughs> three, I'm not going for yeah. I'm not going for big goals. I, I, I want to yeah. tie it. It's we, the same yeah. it's actually the same thing, really. I'd like some nerves left after Friday night if possible. <laughs> yeah, four three. <laughs> um, well we mentioned earlier our magnificent three one win against Watford at Vicarage Road earlier this season. Let's have another look at that magnificent three points. Sebastian Aller getting through the middle, gets it under his feet, he's still got it, looking to try and play it across the goal. Here it is, chance really for West Ham here, and Lanzini running across the box in the end. Down he goes, and Lanzini has won a penalty for West Ham. Chris Kavanagh blows his whistle, Mark Noble from the spot, scores, and that is added to the two he got here in the last day of last season. Noble gives West Ham a 1-0 lead here at Watford on his first Premier League start of the campaign. Look at the gap between the that's West Ham attack and mid That's what's happening. That is exactly what's happening. Here's Will Hughes, who's shown great... coming surely for Watford with the pressure that they were exerting since going behind. Great stuff from Masuaku, runs for Anderson, great touch, can he tee up a teammate here? Yes he can! Sebastian Haller turns it in! Welcome to English football for Sebastian Haller. How do referees never Corner give that? Corner to Antonio, that. pushed onto the bar and then hooked in! by West Ham's centre-forward, a new hero, Sebastian Haller. 
He it was, was an overhead kick, brilliantly done. It was turned onto the bar in the first instance by Antonio, and then Halla was there, and the Frenchman has got immediate hero status here. Well, our next guest is one of West Ham's all-time great strikers. Two spells of the club, countless goals. We caught up with Tony Cotter. Again, Welcome to the show, Tony Cotty. You had your glasses on there. You're on the beach. Hey, not bad, this retirement lark, is it? Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boys, I wish I was retired. I still have to do a bit of work. I didn't play in those modern days. Not like Bolton and all the modern footballers. I didn't play in those <laughs> We had a good time and didn't get any money. <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go. What time are you getting on the rosé? Are you going to give it another hour or so? No, a bit late. A bit later on. Like we're still sort of in lockdown, so I'll have, I have to wait about five o'clock before I can crack one open. So <laughs> okay. I, have birthday, I have my birthday Saturday, and it's the first time West Ham have ever played on my birthday. And they won four nil. Mikel got four goals, and I was absolutely thrilled. I had a great day. Yeah, yes. happy fifty-fifth uh, birthday, 55th. Tony. Um, what? Well, let's talk about last week. It was a roller coaster of a week. We had that really frustrating defeat against Burnley. What was your reading on that game? Yeah, it was frustrating is probably the word, was it? It was almost like a bit of a typical performance of this season, really, where we sort of flatter to deceive a little bit. And Burnley are a well-organised team. We all know that. Got a good manager, good, honest, mainly British players. And they're always going to be tough to beat, even if they've got nothing to play for. So I didn't expect anything other than a, a tough game. But you, you've got to say it was a disappointing result. He, even a one all or a nil-nil draw would have been so much better and made such a big difference. And it's been a bit bit weird over the weekend. I don't know how you guys feel, but, you know, like once we beat Norwich 4-0, you've got the six-point gap and then the goal difference as well, which is good for us. And you're thinking, well, that's it. We're, you know, we're safe now. And then Bournemouth and Villa go and win. And you, all of a sudden, you think, hold on a sec, you know, especially with the three games we've got left, you're thinking, this isn't over yet. So it's... It's, it's been a real strange weekend. You, you really don't need those Villa wins and that Bournemouth win on a birthday hangover, do you, on a Sunday? <laughs> That's the last thing you need. Listen, I, I watched the football. It was, what was great was half 12 kickoff. So by the time we got round to later in the evening, that was it. I wasn't worried about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Looking ahead, Watford on Friday night. How do you see that going? You know, Watford will be looking and thinking, we need to beat West Ham, which it should make for a good game. But, you know, we, we can't afford to, to lose... Um, I think there's always much talk around about this time of the season about six-pointers and must-win games and all that rubbish. But I, I often look at the other way, like I said with the Burnley game, it's more a don't-lose game. And we can't afford to lose to Watford. We, you know, Obviously, we want, to, we want us to win, but we can't afford to lose. But it's going to be a tough game and we're playing after everyone else as well. So, it could be even more pressure on and you know, they could be level one points of us. Although, to be fair, I think Bournemouth are at Men's City, so I'm not sure that's going to be the case. Oh, dear. Yeah. We, don't need, we don't need this in our lives, do we? Um, <laughs> But you're, you're... This is West Ham. What do you, listen, what do you expect? You've been... <laughs> That's what I said at the start of the show. <laughs> exactly. Listen, we, I said all along, we will stay up, but we will make it hard and we'll make it yes. interesting and everyone will be biting their nails. But it's never been any different with West Ham. You know, we, you know, when we're in a relegation fight, we always do things the hard way. Um, you're a big West Ham fan, no doubt. You, I mean, you already know um, Bournemouth's fixtures, Villa's fixtures. What, how do you see this playing out? Do you think we're going to get to Friday night and it's not going to matter? We're going to still have a bit of a gap there? I've given up. I've given up. Yeah, I've given up trying to predict it now because my predictions aren't very good for football anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a prediction segment for you here. Like, hold on a minute. <laughs> I, I, I think we possibly might draw against Watford. And I think the way Man United are playing and, you know, like going to Old Trafford is not easy at the best of times, let alone with the form they're in at the moment. I don't expect us to get anything from that game. So... I think potentially we might be going into the Villa game. All you can ask for is we've got a destiny in our own hands. You know, I, if, if we know that a win or a draw and we're safe against Villa, then I think we'll take that. It's when you go into a game and, you know, the other team have got their destiny in their own hands. That's when it's a problem. So, at the moment, everything's OK, but it's going to be a bit of a nail-biter, I think, and a, a fantastic end to the Premier League season. Well, fingers crossed it has a happy ending and you're back down on the beach for the rest of the summer. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Tony. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, boys. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers, thank you. Tony Cotty there, David. He's jangled my nerves a little bit, if I'm honest. He, he thinks, seems to think he's going to go down to Villa in the last game. Well, he didn't even recognise I was here. So. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, like you said, you know, been, West Ham been through it so many times. 
But at least he enjoyed his birthday. He did. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the main thing. Isn't yeah, it? That's, that's the big takeaway from this episode of Inside Irons. Well, up next, Watford. Let's have a look at our top five goals against the Hornets. Noble, one of those players, burst forward, edge of the penalty area. Oh, it's great skill. Noble shoots. Noble scores. again. As O'Brien comes forward, still O'Brien, 2-0. In stoppage time at the end of the first half. West Ham get a goal which could set them up nicely to build. How do referees never Corner get that? Corner to Antonio, right pushed onto the bar and then hooked in by West Ham's centre forward, a new hero, Sebastian Haller. He this was an overhead kick, brilliantly done. It was turned onto the bar in the first instance by Antonio, and then Haller was there, and the Frenchman has got immediate hero status here. Here goes Pyatt again. <laughs> Magnificent. Antonio takes the credit for the second, but Payet showing his party piece as well. After Lanzini had done it earlier with a shot that went wide, he turns it on for the cross. West Ham get their second. 2 0. It's cocky, he's in the box, on the edge of the box, he's making space. Oh, beautiful ball for Paris. Can Paris score? Yes, he has! It's a great goal! That was our top five goals against Watford. Now, David, we're going to play a little word association, a West Ham word association here. I'm going to chuck you some West Ham related players' names or managers' names. I want you to come back at us with just a few words right off the top of your head. How you feel about that particular individual? You ready? Hang on, let me get. <laughs> <laughs> get, your, get, your hat on. get your that on. Right, here we go. Thomas Repka. Thomas Repka, he was the. He was a machine. 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 Paolo De Canio. F for pheasant. That's <laughs> <laughs> that one again. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Neil Ruddock. Monster. <laughs> John Monker. Joker. Yeah, quick. Sir Trevor Brookin. Legend. Yeah. Michael Carrick. Graceful. Joe Cole. Mm. Joe Cole, top of my head. I want to say wizard. Wizard, mm, yeah. Wizard, that's nice. Nice, getting the flow of this now. Jermaine Defoe. Annoying. <laughs> and I, you I, said I, that before. I, I, no, you said that before. Yeah, so annoying, but, you know, yeah, yeah, annoying player to play against. <laughs> Annoyingly good. Annoyingly good, yes. Freddie Canute. Oh, so much. I can't, I can't describe Freddie. He's <laughs> just undescribable. Je, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah. <laughs> I love Freddie. I can't, no, it's difficult to describe Freddie. This guy had everything. You're good? Positive emotions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but he, he, he was so quiet. Yeah. Humble. He, hum, humble. Humble. Yeah. Are you playing the game or are I playing? No, no. <laughs> but I'm thinking because I've met him a few times. Yeah, yeah. And Fre that's what Freddie he was to me. one of the loveliest guys. Calm. Yeah. So lovely and quiet, yeah. but until then, I'd completely forgotten about yeah. him. <laughs> um, Titi Kamara. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anomaly. 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 <laughs> uh, Christian Daly. Oh, Mr. Workaholic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Workaholic, definitely. Uh, Don Hutchison. He's my friend now. Oh, but not at the time. No, me and Don are Oh, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, my missus laughing. Um, <laughs> Don was with me at, at Liverpool. Yeah. So we had like an interesting relationship and we kind of, in sort of post West Ham as well, there was this up and down, up and down relationship. We were friends now, so I like Don. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, you didn't play with this man for West Ham, but you did play with him for England, Carton Cole. <laughs> the man. 
<laughs> that's enough for me. The man. <laughs> don't over elaborate because that's what I'm not, not going to bring Hong Kong into this. At yeah, all. exactly. <laughs> don't bring Hong Kong into it. The yeah. man. <laughs> all right, Colton, that's it for this week's show. I feel like we learned a lot. Friday night, Watford at home, right here at the London Stadium. It's our biggest game in years. I'm watching it at my father-in-law's house. He's a big Watford fan. I've married into a big Watford clan. <laughs> this is a nightmare scenario for me. But we need those points. We do. Um, but I would go back to the fact that I don't know no Watford fans. So I don't have no <laughs> affinity to Watford whatsoever. Yeah. I know you've been, you've spent time there, but you're probably the only person I know from Watford era of me not even knowing anybody from there. So, yeah, well, I, I'm a fan of all my ex-clubs. Oh, that's what it yeah. is. So who, all, you, who all, are you with? All 500 of them. <laughs> yeah, some, some that, yeah. Um, you got more, you got, nah. More clubs than Nick Faldo? Nick Faldo used to go to my school. No <laughs> way. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. How the hell? Anyway, um, I, think, I think West Ham at home, with the form they're going, I mean, as I say, I support all my teams, but I want West Ham to win. Oh, yeah. that is what we wanted to hear. What yeah. a note to end on. Thank you, David, for joining us here in the studio. I'm just going to go on Watford TV now. Yeah. <laughs> say the same thing. You're going to say the same thing on that side. No, 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 no. no. Listen, I've got my West Ham shirt on now. Yeah, he, has, oh, yeah. he, has made an actually, he actually has made an effort to come in here today and he's got the colours on. Yeah, respect. Unbelievable. Respect. Fred Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And I'm going to be sharing photos with my West Ham mates. With me <laughs> on my first trip. Thank you for inviting me first time to the stadium. What a note to end on. Thank you, David, for joining us. And thank you also to Mikel Antonio and Tony Cotti. We'll be back before the Villa game. And hopefully we've got plenty of points and we won't need to win that one. We'll see you then. Come on, you Irons. <laughs>